you can describe the character that I'm analyzing in this week's video as cute, deadly, and manipulative. Senrita Z the Zombie Giselle Guel is a complex character who has left many readers wondering just how deceitful appearances can really be. There is controversy regarding the gender identity of this character, as during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, her interactions with Yumichika had hinted at her sex being masculine as opposed to feminine, but in terms of gender, she identifies herself as female. This inverted trend of not judging her by how she appears to be continues with how her goofy smile and her cheerful tone of voice is contrasted against her sadistic and almost sexual delight after she had transformed Bambietta into a zombie. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down and analyzing everything that we know about Giselle from the Bleach manga and the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Be sure to stick around until the end of this video because I will be speculating about how her zombification ability works and why her blood is so poisonous. So without further the delay, here is my complete breakdown and analysis of Giselle Guell. Giselle makes her debut appearance within chapter 544 of the manga and in episode 14 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. She has long black hair and piercing blue eyes which builds upon her outwardly feminine look. She is normally seen with two long black strands of hair sticking out like antennae and in addition to this she puts on a tiny white cap on the side of her head which is decorated with a black peak and the Wandenreich emblem on the front of the cap. The placement of it is quite odd and it is evident that the cap is way too small for her, but it's just a way of her personalizing her own Sternritter uniform. Additionally, her outfit is comprised of a standard white collar with a particular design standing out for its unexpected modesty, with a trench coat and long sleeves, as well as her white shoes and black leggings, which are all complemented with a blue heart buckle on her waist. Giselle's look could easily be inspired by a traditional schoolgirl design. Shockingly, despite her normal appearance as one of the female Sternritter, Kubo has confirmed in one of his club outside question and answer sessions that Giselle is in fact a biological male. This leaves so much room for interpretation about her character as we speculate about her reasons for wearing a standard female uniform. Most fans have concluded that she enjoys wearing these clothes because she does not want to identify as a male and instead identifies as a transgender female. However, it is for this very reason that Giselle is a very controversial character amongst the fandom. She's often at the center of a lot of arguments concerning gender identity, and personally I think that Kubo has introduced a very entertaining character into the roster of the Sternritter, and there is just so much more about a character than just her gender identity. And I hope that this video helps to shine a spotlight onto these different aspects of a character. Often referred to as Gigi by her fellow Bambis, Giselle is initially shown to be an easygoing, laid-back Quincy. However, we soon realize that Giselle's personality is all about duality. While engaging with her opponents within the heat of battle, she is often shown to be indecisive, light-hearted, sarcastic, and even downright comedic. In contrast to this, her actions are cruel, oppressive, and aggressive. For example, she shows very little empathy for the zombified Bambietta as she delightfully explains to Yumichika about how aroused she was when Bambi was pleading for her life. In chapter 583, during the confrontation with Ichigo, when she is accompanied by the other Bambis, she momentarily exclaims, why doesn't he just die? The effect of this very spiteful comment is completely underwhelming due to her seemingly cheerful expression, which does not match up with the words that are coming out of her mouth. By frequently taunting her enemies into attacking her, she is able to gain an advantage in battle, which she demonstrates in chapter 580, her special ability which allows her spilt blood to transform her targets into zombies. This ability is inspired by the iconic fictional horror monsters from the zombie genre, and it results in Giselle being one of the most memorable Sternrit is my opinion. In general, she wholeheartedly embraces her dark and psychotic side and she does so with ease, and overall it results in her inconsistent behaviour and expressions which gives Giselle an unsettling air of unpredictability. Her abilities reflect her psychology as we soon learn that she has the power to manipulate flesh and to heal people. However, she instead decides to use the worst aspects of her powers, which is to zombify her opponents and even former allies in the case of Bambietta. In 
chapter 584, we read that Giselle can heal her comrade's injuries by replacing their own flesh with that of the deceased. She also demonstrates that she can replace a lost limb by removing the corresponding limb from a corpse. Now, in most situations, Giselle actively seeks to zombify others. She does this in order to gain ultimate control over them and to ensure that people never leave her. This is quite sickening when we are able to understand the disturbing reasoning behind her actions. I mean, the only time that she shows excessive admiration for Bambietta is after she has been transformed into one of her zombies, ensuring that the two of them will be together for all eternity. To be quite frank, her behavior alludes to the fact that she is emotionally stunted because she often exhibits outbursts that you would expect from a child. There are several examples of her behaving childlike during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and she honestly thinks that she has every right to mistreat Bambietta simply because she has professed her love for her. This apparently gives her free reign to abuse the living hell out of her, and in some instances it is very funny, and in others it catches you off guard, making us wonder if Giselle is going too far this time. This is a common personality flaw that is associated with the aggressor of an abusive relationship. She appears to have an on and off switch in relation to her mood swings, which makes it agonizing for her victims who are unaware of when her next mood swing will be. On the other hand, Giselle is seen to behave normally in front of other characters who she does not have a romantic attachment towards. In order for us to appreciate why Giselle displays such conflicting personality traits, we need to first delve into her backstory. Unfortunately for us, Kubo does not reveal much about her backstory within the manga or the Can't Fear Unworld light novels, so we don't definitively know the reasoning behind her actions. However, I do want to share a backstory theory with you which would help to explain what had happened to her character in the past. My headcanon would be that her parents had abandoned her because of her gender identity, and she ended up being picked up by a member of Yuhobak's Wandenreich. It is evident that she may have been ostracized and rejected by society, and she had lived a life of social exclusion and misery until she had found acceptance from the Sternritter, who embodied the idea of being outcasts. They are led by Yuhobak, who in fact is a very unique Quincy, who acquires power by sharing his soul with others. He is unable to gather Reishi from his surroundings like a typical Quincy. Giselle found her home amongst outcasts who rejected the conventional ways of the Quincy that we learned about via the traditional teachings of Soken Ishida. And we know that Uryu had eventually inherited these traditional ways of the Quincy. Growing up, because of Giselle's desire to dress up as a girl, she may have faced some discrimination, which would have influenced the zombie shrift ability that she eventually acquires. Her powers may have manifested because of a desire to compensate for the fact that she had never truly had anyone who had stuck around in her life. Her powers allow her to take over the body of her target and to manipulate them to her will. Being isolated and rejected must have been difficult for Giselle, and while she was in the Wandenreich, she eventually met Bambietta Bastabine, who ended up becoming her first real friend. I'm assuming they would have made a childish promise that they would always stick together at this point and never be separated. Unfortunately for Giselle, Bambietta then made some new friends via Candice, Lil Toto, and Meninas, and the special bond between the two of them had become diluted and spread amongst the wider cast of the Bambis, overall resulting in her friendship with Bambietta becoming weaker and weaker with time. In addition to all of this, Giselle probably grew jealous of all of the men that Bambietta had invited into her room, because her feelings for her did eventually become romantically charged. In episode 14 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, we see Giselle scold Bambietta for constantly inviting men into her room, only for her to violently end their lives. Perhaps in some sick way, Giselle wanted to be the partner that Bambietta Bambietta could hold onto forever. Now this is pretty much me theorizing Giselle's backstory based upon ideas and themes relating to her that have been found within the manga, but I think that this offers us a glimpse into the past experiences of her which may have influenced her powers as well as her unique personality. Giselle makes her debut appearance within the anime when Yuhobak announces that Uryu Ishida will be his successor. She is one of the few Sternritter who wonders aloud why Uryu is on the stage with Yuhobak, and during a casual conversation with the other Sternritter, she playfully asks Candice to go ahead and seduce Uryu, who she refers to as Successor Boy. Despite her provocative suggestion, it is obvious that Giselle doesn't have very strong feelings about this topic in comparison to Basby, who has a very emotional reaction towards this news, while Giselle, on the other hand, maintains a happy go lucky expression. After Bambietta kills a Wandenreich soldier who was giving her special relief, Giselle, Lil Toto, Meninas, and Candice enter her room, and Giselle's smiles 
and points out that Bambietta has made a mess again. This scene has captivated many fans because of how the female sternwriters react to Bambi's antics here. It is clear that it is not the first time that she has invited a soldier into her room and when Candice suggests that the Bambi should do something about Bambietta killing attractive men when she is annoyed, Giselle points out that Candice is also someone who likes to play with her fellow subordinates. It is very revealing that Giselle is always the first one to point out the lewd activities of her comrades, especially considering what we learn about her character much later on. It's like the pot calling the kettle black, because Giselle is revealed to be a sexual deviant later on. It really adds a layer of depth to her character as we wonder if she truly believes that her aggressive actions are justifiable, while she deems it okay to judge Bambietta and Candice for very similar actions. The banter continues in this scene when Candice asks Giselle if she should fight her, but they are interrupted by Bambietta who angrily blasts a hole in the wall to get their attention. It is clear from their dynamic that while the female Sternritter have no secrets to hide from each other, there is definitely an underlying tension between them, which is hinted at via the passive aggressive comments that Giselle makes from time to time. The tension amongst the Bambis is further heightened when we see how Giselle and the other Bambis abandon their leader when she is about to fight against Komomura. In the anime, Bambietta screams angrily for her comrades to come out, but it seems like Giselle and the others care very little about her feelings as they happily abandon her. In chapter 558, this story takes a horrifying turn after Bambietta is defeated in battle. Following her fight against Komomura, she is absolutely powerless and she lies helplessly on the ground. We then see a shot of Candice, Lil Toto, Giselle and Meninas towering over her body as the defenseless Bambietta realizes that her former subordinates are planning to finish off their leader. And by finish off, I mean that she is about to meet a fate worse than death. Giselle plays the role of a false savior and promises that they will take good care of Bambietta, but she then proceeds to kill her and transform her into a zombie. The next time that we see Giselle is in chapter 579. She along with the other female Quincy confront Kimpachi Zaraki following his battle against Grammy. For a brief moment, it does appear as though it is going to be the end of one of the strongest captains within Bleach and Giselle even goes as far as to taunt the members of the 11th division into attacking her in order to save the life of their captain. This proves to be a very clever move as her blood ends up spilling all over their bodies after a soldier slashes her across the chest. Filled with excitement at a complete victory, Giselle then uses the power of the zombie to force the 11th division members to commit suicide. She then turns her attention back towards Kimpachi and discusses with her fellow Quincy about how he should be killed. But then in a shocking turn of events, Ichigo finally arrives onto the battlefield with his unmistakable Reatsu reverberating across the battlefield. The three Sternritter attack him all at once, but he is effortlessly able to defend himself by throwing them into buildings. Now this is the first encounter Giselle has with the main character, and from it we are able to deduce just how strong Ichigo has now become after his training in the royal palace. From Giselle's perspective, she is wondering who this man is. It is Lil Toto who informs her that he is one of Yuhobak's five great war potentials, whom all the Quincy were warned about. Once all four of the Bambis engage in battle, we notice that Giselle is able to use her bow, which is a standard Quincy weapon. And in addition to this, we learn that she prefers not to use her holy form, as she states that it is too tiring. We don't really know whether if this is true or if she is just being lazy during this battle here. Giselle's upbeat and confident attitude is very deceiving, so we are left to wonder whether if she is telling the truth about her holy form. Personally, I think that Giselle is more accustomed to fighting and relying on her zombification abilities, and incidentally, she may have not mastered full control over her holy form. In chapter 584, Ichigo uses his Getsuga Jujisho, and it causes Candice to lose her arm, and we see a glimpse of Giselle's regeneration abilities here, when she assists Candice by restoring her arm. Take note of how Kubo illustrates her face in that particular manga panel. Giselle is almost drooling at the prospect of healing Candice's arm. It is clear that Giselle's unhealthy obsession with zombies is directly correlated to her getting excited. Giselle then points out to Candice that she is unable to zombify a fellow Quincy unless they are already dead, hinting that her powers have limits with regards to how her blood works on different races. Within the Can't Fear Your Own World light novels, we learn that Giselle even points out to Lil Toto that she can only turn hollows into zombies temporarily. This is due to the fact that hollow reishi does not mix well with Quincy's. This is revealed within page 87 of the first volume of Can't Fear Your Own World. In the manga, before Candice resumes her fight with Ichigo, she gets attacked by Burnerfinger 1, and it turns out that Giselle and Lil Toto were also taken out by Bazbi. The hot-headed 
Bandit Sternritter states that he doesn't want anybody to interfere with him when he takes down Ichigo. However, the female Sternritters, including Giselle, are not taken down so easily. Together with Pepe, Nanana, and Robert, Giselle and her team members decide to take on Ichigo 8 versus 1. Now, when Yuhaba gets ready to assault the royal palace, Ichigo attempts to stop him, but is confronted by Candice and the other seven Sternritter. Giselle and her comrades are then faced with a surprising backup squad that arrive to even up the playing field as they defend Ichigo, and it results in one of the most hyped standoffs within Bleach as we finally get to see Giselle come face to face with Renji, Byakuya, Rukia, Hisagi, Ikaku, and Yumichika. Giselle has a very interesting dialogue with Yumichika and Ikaku within chapter 588, and it's pretty much the source of why there is so much controversy around Giselle. She begins by pretending to play the victim and asks them if they are really going to use their Zambakdo to slice through an unarmed girl. Her provocation does not have the intended effect, however, as both Ikaku and Yumichika see through her horrible damsel in distress act. Yumichika then makes an iconic observation as he calls her out on her bluff and states that she should not be referring to herself as an unarmed girl because in reality she is a man. Giselle reacts by making one of the creepiest shocked faces and pretends to be taken aback by this accusation. During this instance she is revealed to be an excellent actor. Yumichika has apparently got an acute sense of smell because he can pick up the stench of her male bodily fluids. Angered by her words she summons zombified Bambietta to defend her master and to fight against Yumichika and Ikaku. When Bambietta is attacked by Yumichika her arm is cut off but Giselle mocks him and points out that because Bambi is already long dead she cannot be killed. She goes on to explain that with Shinigami it is easy to zombify them if she splashes her blood on them while they are still alive. In chapter 590 Mayuri joins the battlefield with his brightly lit suit which momentarily blinds Giselle causing her to question who on earth he is. The two of them then have a casual back and forth before Bambietta appears in front of Giselle pleading for something. Now zombie Bambietta seems to be in great distress and she says that she can't hold on any longer. Bambietta appears to be desiring something from Giselle. Her sad desperation cleverly mirrors the actions of a person who is addicted to some type of substance and this is indicated from her not getting a fix which results in a craving and longing for it and her overall restlessness is incredibly illustrated by Kubo. The resulting slap that Giselle gives her is so forceful and unexpected as she ends up grabbing her undead comrade by the hair and taunts her by saying that she is salivating with desire. Now Kubo doesn't explicitly tell us what Bambietta wants from Giselle here but we can infer from this lewd exchange that Giselle makes her zombies depend on her for some sort of sexual gratification. It is the only explanation for this very weird conversation. During battle against Mayuri, Giselle uses Bambietta to launch several bombs which are countered by Nemu's spherical devices. After the spheres explode, Giselle wonders why they did not explode immediately, prompting Mayuri to explain the mechanism behind how they work and how he has completely nullified Bambietta's ability to explode. In response to this, Giselle summons several zombified Shinigami, but Mayuri in turn summons his own undead soldiers via four resurrected Aranka. Charlotte makes a funny remark suggesting that the two of them have such a close resemblance, and this is a comedic moment in a very heated battle. Kubo once again does a great job of illustrating Giselle's shocked reaction, as if she has never heard anything more insulting in her life. So we can understand that despite her deplorable abilities and the fact that she is hiding her real sex, Giselle is a character who holds superficial qualities like beauty in high regard. I'm guessing this is why she prefers to be a female in order to allow herself to express fluidity via gender roles. When Bambietta fails to attack and defeat Charlotte, Giselle summons an unexpected ally and it is none other than the zombified form of Hitsugaya. After Hitsugaya critically injures Ikaku and Yumichika, Mayuri theorizes that he was turned into a zombie before he had died. Giselle confirms this and explains how anyone transformed into a zombie before death has better movement and reaction speeds because they still have fresh cells within their body and they can be fully controlled because they have no more agency or free will. When Mayuri questions her about what fun there is in controlling someone with no free will, Giselle offhandedly states that she doesn't know because she is not a sadist. Now this is probably one of the most hypocritical responses in the entire series and one which allows us to see how delusional Giselle really is. Eventually zombified Kensei and Rose also appear on the battlefield as Mayuri reveals that he can reverse the effects of Giselle's shrift. He takes the zombies under his control because he has created drugs that change 
change the composition of blood by using blood samples of members of the Gotei 13 as the foundation of his cure. Giselle is then stabbed through the heart but survives and flees to a cave with Bambietta. The following panel in chapter 603 is psychologically disturbing because we see how Giselle survives by drinking her zombie's blood in order to sustain herself. When Bambietta attempts to push Giselle away, she gets a horrible beatdown and a lecture about how she is already dead and she should give Giselle's blood back to her. Giselle's malevolent side really comes out here as she goes really too far to the point where she is about to murder her. Thankfully, she catches herself and she instantly switches her tone to that of a loving and well-meaning friend who only wishes for the two of them to stay together until death. When Yubak attempts to kill the remaining Sternritter in the Serite with Ashvalen, Giselle and Lil Toto barely escape with their lives and it is then that they decide to team up with the Shinigami in order to get revenge against Yuobak for betraying them. Giselle, Lil Toto and Basby are given orbs to charge with their Reishi as they begin to construct the doorway to the royal palace along with the Shinigami. In chapter 635 they make it to the royal palace and move quickly to Silburn where Basby declares his intention to kill both Yuobak and Hashward. Giselle decides to team up with Lil Toto in order to confront Yuobak while Basby is busy with Hashward. However, Yuobak easily disposes of them, with Giselle being incapacitated and collapsing as we see her blood pool around her head which she happily begins to lick. Giselle's main power is her zombie shrift ability. Anyone who comes into contact with even a drop of her blood will automatically transform into a corpse that obeys her every command. If someone has a high Reatsu level, then Giselle uses more blood in order to zombify them. The blood must be diffused at the heart and spread through every organ in the body before the zombie can begin to take over. And this explains why Captain class zombies have reddish skin. We don't really know if Giselle's blood has some hidden properties. There are some theories that have suggested that her blood has sensual qualities and can make her zombies feel addicted to it and this is similar to the common trope found within vampiric lore. A vampire drinking the blood of a woman is often depicted as a sensual act which appears to be giving the victim some sort of pleasure while at the same time draining away their life and Kubo may be paying homage to this with Bambietta and Giselle's relationship verging on the edge of third base and fourth base. Giselle's abilities also enable her to aid her fellow Quincy by using the flesh of the deceased to replace any limbs that they may have lost. She can also reattach severed limbs to her zombies by attaching the limb back to where it was removed from. Additionally, Giselle is able to heal herself of any life-altering injuries by simply activating her zombie ability. If you were to draw mythological parallels Giselle's powers could also be based upon the type of voodoo magician known as a boka. It's someone who serves spirits with both hands. The right male hand allows the magician to heal people, whilst the left female hand is utilized for dark magic and zombification. These magicians can make zombies using the poison of a puffer fish, which leaves the person who takes it with a dead look, similar to how Giselle's zombies have slightly grey skin. After analyzing Giselle's character, it is evident that she has extreme fears of abandonment. Her frequent physical and emotional abuse of Bambietta whenever she tries to express her needs suggests a link between her lack of control over a situation and her feelings of being left behind. In addition to all of this, Giselle does not seem to be capable of realizing the consequences of her actions. When she nearly ends up killing Bambietta in the cave, she immediately hugs her and expresses complete tranquility and happiness about how much she loves her. This suggests a mental disorder of some sort where she lacks the ability to perceive the reality of what is going on around her. We could go as far as to say that she is clinically insane and is in desperate need of psychiatric evaluation. To wrap up my thoughts on Sternritter Z the zombie, she is in fact a very complicated character who has multiple layers of duality within her. She embodies the theme of blurring the lines. She blurs the lines between masculine and feminine, between cheerful and sadistic, between loving and abusive, and lastly her abilities represent blurring the lines between healing others and zombifying them. Overall, Kubo did a fantastic job of layering her character with all of these contrasting qualities. Via her character, we were able to witness how she had turned the tide of the battle against the Shinigami, and contrastingly, she ended up joining the Shinigami to battle against Yuobak after she was betrayed by him. Whether if it's the traits of her personality or the actions that she does during the Thousand Year Blood War arc, there is definitely a noticeable duality within Giselle. So we've now reached the point of the video where I want to hand over the discussion to all of you. What were your thoughts about the relationship between Giselle 
and Bambietta. Did you learn more about Giselle's ability, the zombie? And was there anything that I've forgotten to mention about her character? Be sure to continue the discussion in the comments. And lastly, thank you for making it to the end of this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next Bleach video. If you enjoy my content, then you can support my channel through Patreon for as little as a dollar a month, or even through YouTube by becoming a channel member. You will gain access to exclusive channel perks and a Discord server which I frequently use. So become a member of my Zero Division and be the first to know about my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, and whatever you contribute will mean a lot to me.